So now we're going to cover the effector mechanism of CD8 positive T cells, also known as cytotoxic T cells. So right now we have T cells that are, have been activated and they're in the lymph node or other secondary lymphoid tissue. Well, that's great, but the pathogen is typically in some other tissue in the body, skin, connective tissue, respiratory tract, GI tract. So the pathogen is in the tissues, but the T cells, they were naive. They entered the lymph nodes, they became activated, and they're still in the lymph nodes. So now they have to leave the lymph nodes and try to find the location in the body where the infection is, the primary infection is. So we see in the lymph node, we have an, an army of activated cytotoxic T cells. So what's going to happen to these T cells? Well, one of the first things that happens when T cells become activated is they proliferate and they turn on genes that produce these lytic granules. So now these cells are cytotoxic. They have these toxic, toxic granules that they will use to hunt down and kill any cell that has a peptide that matches its T cell receptor. So now these are effector cells. They will go out and do the job of eliminating the pathogen. So, but again, these cells, they're still in the lymph node. They're, they have to leave the lymph node and find the infection. So what else happens to these cells? Well, one thing that happens during T cell activation, turn on the production of lytic granules. You also turn on the production of this cell adhesion molecule called VLA4. So VLA4 is a protein that's found on the surface of activated T cells that will allow the T cell to find and adhere to the endothelial tissue of uh, an inflamed site. So these T cells now will leave the tissue, I mean, sorry, leave the lymph tissue and enter an inflamed site. So if you go back and recall about uh, endothelial activation, when there is an infection detected in a tissue, there are macrophages that are present in the tissue and the macrophages are releasing cytokines and some effect of the cytokines occur on the endothelial cells. So we have inflammation, we have changes in the vasculature of infected tissues. And some of those changes, remember, change proteins that allow for neutrophils to stop bind tightly and enter the infected site. So something very similar is going to happen with activated T cells. Macrophages are sending cytokines because they're detecting an infection using their toll-like receptors. Macrophages are releasing cytokines and that's getting endothelial cells in that uh, blood vessel in that tissue to turn on another adhesion molecule called VCAM1. So, when T cells, activated cytotoxic T cells, when they enter the bloodstream, they're gonna circulate all over the body, but they're only going to enter inflamed tissues. And the way they know the inflammation is occurring here is their VLA4 molecule, which turns on when T cells are activated, bind tightly to the VCAM1 molecule found on the surface of endothelial cells when there's inflammation occurring. So these T cells stop, they know, they know their help is needed in this tissue, and they will enter the inflamed tissue site to look for peptides that match their peptide binding site. So this is how T cells travel from lymph tissue into um, inflamed tissues. Great. So now the T cell has made it, and there it is on the, the bottom there to, with this little T cell receptor, and it's got its lytic granules, and it's a CD8 T cell, so it's going to check the MHC class one molecules. So in this tissue, we've got six cells. Uh, cells two, three, and four are infected. Cells one, five, and six are not infected. All cells have proteins in them. So we have blue um, self proteins, and we have red uh, non-self proteins because those cells are infected with a pathogen. So all cells uh, present peptide on their MHC class one. They are presenting a random sampling of peptides they find inside themselves. So they're presenting non-self peptides and self peptides. So the job of this cytotoxic T cell is to look at all the MHC molecules and try to find the peptide that matches its antigen binding site. So it needs to bind strongly to something. So let's say this T cell goes up to this first cell.
and it uses its T-cell receptor to bind the MHG molecule, and it binds, but not very strongly. It doesn't form a T-cell synapse. And the T-cell says, well, I don't bind strongly here, so I guess this isn't the affected cell. Moves on to the next one. It uses its T-cell receptor to check the MHG and the peptide. If it does not bind strongly, it moves on to the next one. So let's say it moves on to the, cell, the second cell, and now the T-cell receptor is binding the peptide that initially activated it way in the lymph node. Um, it was shown this peptide by a dendritic cell. Now it's being shown the exact same peptide in the infected tissue. So this T cell says, ah, I bind strongly to this cell. This cell must have an infection, the infection that I was shown when I was a naive T cell in the lymph node. So now this T cell is going to kill this virally infected cell. How will it do it? It's going to release the lytic granules. And the lytic granules are a number of substances. One of them is a substance called porphyrin, and that produces a pore in the surface of the recognized cell. So now there's a pore, there's a hole in that cell. And the uh, function of this hole is so that this lytic granule ha has another substance in it, has a number of substances. The one we're going to talk about are granzymes. These are enzymes, specifically proteases, that go through the pore and enter the cytoplasm of the infected cell. Now that granzymes are in the infected cell, they will cause a chain reaction that will trigger apoptosis. So if you recall, apoptosis is programmed cell death. The cell has been uh, kept alive by the virus. The virus is trying to hide, but it can hide no more. Granzymes are here. Granzymes trigger a chain reaction that causes everything in the cell to be destroyed, specifically the DNA. So the viruses, they're going to pass along their DNA to their progeny, but not here. Once granzymes are in here, uh, the cellular machinery destroys any and all DNA the cellular DNA in the nucleus, and the viral DNA found wherever, in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus. So DNA is destroyed, proteins are destroyed, and the cell is destroyed. So this cytotoxic T cell has destroyed a virally infected cell. Great, let's move to the next cell. So this T cell receptor will check more MHG molecules if it finds a match with the peptide, binds strongly, that's the peptide it recognizes, same thing releases porphyrin, releases granzymes, destroys that cell. That cell dies. Moves on to the next one. Checks all the MHEs. If it finds one, it finds peptides that don't match it, moves on to the next one. Once it finds a peptide that matches the MHE, destroys that cell, same mechanism. So cells two, three, and four have been eliminated. Cell five, it's presenting a self-peptide. That peptide is not recognized by that T-cell receptor, so that uh, cytotactic T-cell moves to the next one. That peptide presenting a self-peptide doesn't recognize that T-cell receptor and then keeps moving on. So we have seen how a cytotoxic T-cell leaves the lymph tissue where it was activated and circulates through the body entering inflamed sites and binding and killing only those cells that are presenting the matching peptide uh, that it was shown initially during T-cell activation. And if you've noticed, this interaction between the cytotoxic T cell and the target cell did not require CD28 or B7. If you remember, that interaction was required to activate a B cell. So we had CD28 on the surface of the T cell, and we had B7 on the surface of the antigen presenting cell. That was the professional antigen, antigen presenting cell. You needed the B7 CD28 interaction to activate a B cell. But now a B cell is activated, it only needs the interaction between the T cell receptor and a matching MHC peptide complex. And that will be enough to allow the T cell to carry out its effector function.